right, so here we go. How you doing, sis? Hello there. Good morning, Brother Mike. Um, good morning. Good morning. So just tell us, um, give us a little bit of uh, insight. What are you doing? How are you uh, being effective in this time? Um, well, you know, humbly, um, I would say that we are, you know, sort of striving to co-labor in love with our community members um, and other leadership, uh, really community centered around fighting everything from immigration, deportation, displacement, as well as discrimination um, for our undocumented and low wage workers. Um, we also are um, actually doing work around leadership development in educa the educational pipeline. Specifically, um, I actually work for Centro Legal de la Raza. Um, I am the executive director. Uh, we are an organization that um, has been rooted in Oakland, um, specifically in Fruitvale, um, and is serving many um, communities, um, cities, counties, and even statewide. And we do also have a national approach. Um, we've been around for 50 years, um, and we really do a full spectrum of services. Primarily, our core um, efforts are around legal representation and legal services which is free to the community in all of those areas that I just mentioned. Um, so we are a legal service agency. We've been protecting and advancing the rights of low income, immigrant, black communities, and also Latinx communities uh, through a multilingual legal representation, education, and we also do advocacy and policy work. Um, again, we serve, you know, sort of the greater Bay Area, but are very localized in our approach because we've been around for really long time and all of our issues have been driven by community need and priorities wow i mean that was really something else you are really active and we appreciate the work that you're doing out there just give me a little bit of insight and i mean how how did you come to to do this work how did you come to be um uh, uh affecting the community in the way that you are well, I've only been in the Bay Area for now going on four years um, here in August. But um, and, and particularly with Centro Legal, I came on in 2018. And so I, came, I joined an organization that was well organized and also doing a lot of really tremendous work um, um, to support our sort of most disenfranchised community members. Um, for me personally, this has been, you know, or this is a life calling. I've been doing this work for about two decades. Um, I myself um, came up through poverty and homelessness, um, was also a low wage worker, I was in Section A. Um, I also was previously detained. The first time I was in, um, incarcerated was at the age of 14, um, all the way through the age of 21. I was in and out of the system, on probation, uh, multiple, a variety of offenses, but a lot of it was just really simply due to me lacking opportunity and not having a really solid family unit. Yeah. And so, you know, my being able to make it out, um, and, and I can't really say I made it out entirely, but I do have a degree of privilege because I was able to um, make my way through college as a first generation college student, yeah. as a single mother of three children. Yeah. Um, I now have four children. My oldest is 25 and my youngest is 11. Wow. And so, you know, obviously I have a huge responsibility to them. But most of my academic pursuits and also my professional pursuits have really been around justice system reform, um, really at the intersections also of health, education, and leadership development. So, you know, I've been, most, majority of my time the past couple of decades has been around supporting nonprofits to avoid what we call nonprofit displacement. Right. Um, you know, community-based organizations that are grassrooted or, or, or grassroots helping them to be sustainable and to think about how, you know, while we work ourselves out of a job because we never want to preserve our positions, right, in, in the nonprofit uh, complex, but we want to be able to, you know, be rooted um, and ensure that we do have economic opportunity and the folks that are working with us authentically represent the communities we serve. Yes. Um, and me not being from the Bay Area, I will say um, that um, obviously there's a lot of humility that I'm not from here. But my job since I came on board has been to ensure that I bring people back home to the organization. And so we've done that in many ways and really um, select our leaders um, and all of our, you know, staff and employees and contractors and fellows. Um, we look for folks um, who really have the shared and lived experiences of those we serve. Um, so that is something that I'm proud of and 
Um, we're doing a, a lot of really great work. Um, and during this time in COVID, um, we have also sort of adapted and had to pivot and have several rapid response relief efforts to support all of the communities that I had just mentioned. Outstanding. Wow. How can we get involved with, with your pursuit? Yeah, well, to, um, excellent question. Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate this opportunity because we um, don't have um, the ability to reach um, folks at the degree we need to, especially now during COVID. Um, many legal service organizations like ourselves and other community orgs have, are, are now providing virtual and remote services. So this is really important that we get the word out. Um, I would say three distinct ways um, that we can, can really um, support our communities and, and tap into the work that we're doing and get involved. Um, I would say number one, um, follow us on social media. Um, under Centro Legal de la Raza, and you know, uh, we could put it um, in the comment box. Yes. But there's a lot of opportunities. We have a very um, you know, strong communications team or constantly getting information out on how people can get involved in multiple areas. Yes. Um, the second one is sharing resources with um, families, um, with young people, uh, with community members, uh, that your neighbors, um, on the resources that we have. In particular, we have been focus um, in this time and in this current um, sort of perilous and dark um, climate that we're facing, um, we've been co-leading on um, several of the eviction moratoria in multiple jurisdictions um, within city of Alameda, city of Oakland, city of Hayward, Alameda County. And we're also providing emergency financial assistance for tenants and homeowners who are facing eviction. Um, wow. We're preparing ourselves um, for a mass eviction once shelter in place is lifted. Yes. And so we really need to make sure that folks have access to information. Um, so whatever jurisdictions folks are in, even if we don't serve in that jurisdiction particularly, um, we will definitely refer um, as best possible to make sure that folks get the right information. Um, we also recently launched um, through COVID, uh, one of the first um, direct cash assistance relief funds. Um, it's called the Undocumented um, Worker Relief Fund. And we've been able to fundraise close to a million dollars through individual contributions and philanthropy um, to be able to get um, a minimal, really minimal $500 um, stipend uh, to family members who do not qualify for unemployment benefits. Yeah. So we have that application online and, and I'll share that information here in a few. Um, also, if you go online to our website, we have a comprehensive workers guide to explain legal protections of workers um, at the local, state, and federal level. Yes. Because of COVID, a lot of policy has changed um, in different jurisdictions. It's hard to keep up with all of it, but we have created some really great guides to, um, that are in multiple languages um, so that way folks can access the information that they need and how it pertains to them. Um, and then finally, we um, one other area that we are focused on um, so we have one of the largest removal defense uh, legal teams in the state of California, and we have um, a hotline that has been, you know, that we've had since 2017. It's called the CLIP, the Alameda County Immigrant Legal and Education Partnership. Mm -hmm. We also have a hotline that we're supporting with, with Stand Together Contra Costa County. And so we have those two hotlines, and we're able to support folks who are experiencing um, ICE activity or at threat. Um, of deportation. And so we have folks, um, legal uh, folks um, waiting um, for anybody that calls that might have been detained. Um, and then we also um, have volunteer responders and community educators and folks who can go um, on the ground to the communities and, and make sure that um, families are protected and that they know their rights. So we do education, know your rights in full. Uh, we have clinics each week in all of our practice areas. And then we do full scope representation um, if we decide that we're able to take on that case um, effectively. And so we're, we're supporting efforts um, also at Mesa Verde Detention Facility and at the ICE Detention Facilities locally. Um, and so, you know, th that's a lot of the work that we're involved in. So that's a little bit about the resources. Again, go to our website. Um, the final thing um, in way that folks can get involved is participate uh, within your local government leadership um, um, committee meetings and council meetings, super, super important. You know, we show up as advocates and even though we're wearing the hat as residents and also an advocate, they want to hear from community members, right? And we wear the hat of being legal rep. And so we can provide, you know, interpretation around the law and 
talk a little bit about the legal implications uh, when elected officials ask us, but we really want community members to show up. And one benefit, um, you know, unfortunately, but through COVID is that folks can, from their home, if they have access to internet or from their phones, can provide public comments on the issues and talk about how these things impact them. Yeah. And so, you know, if you want more information, um, particularly in your, or within your specific jurisdiction, let us know whether it's around housing, whether it's around immigration, whether it's around um, workers' rights um, or discrimination issues or education issues, um, please reach out and then we will, you know, connect you with the right folks. Wow. Sister Teresa, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you and all the many ways that you are being a blessing to not only our local community uh, at the way, but the, the entire uh, Bay Area. Uh, mo most specifically. So thank you so much for your work, sis. We appreciate oh. you and we love you. Thank you. You're welcome. And, and it's a team effort. I really defer to the leadership of my folks. They are amazing, tireless, fearless um, advocates. And um, I'm just truly, truly blessed to stand alongside them and our community members. Um, keep us in prayer. We really all need it um, in this time. And thank you for your service um, and your commitment. Um, love y'all. Thank you so much. God bless you, sis.